Welcome back to my channel where I let you take a peek into how my autistic brain works. Today we'll again be going through some uh, Quora that I've selected to respond to for some because they're funny, some because they're uh, important, some just because they're interesting. Anyway, we'll start with are there any BLM, Antifa, or coward liberal groups that want to try their, quote, protests in a small town? Somebody points out, you know, well, small towns generally don't have the police brutality that those groups need to protest. But the key part I like on this one is, remember, our grandfathers were Antifa when they went to Germany and Japan to defend democracy. Or rather to enforce it, like the Ukrainians are doing. Exactly. That's, I have never, don't understand why anyone who wasn't a fascist fascist would oppose anti-fascists. It just doesn't make any sense. This one is heartrending and is a big part of why it's so important to keep church and state separate. Where a 10-year-old was forced to cross state lines for an abortion after Ohio's ban went into place, what this doesn't say is a 10-year-old rape victim. You know, why is a 10-year-old having a, an abortion? Well, because she was raped, probably by a relative, unlike what they show in um, Sound of Freedom. But that's another discussion. Uh, but again, this person's very eloquent with, you want a literal child who had to live through the trauma of being raped by someone she should have been able to trust as it should then be punished as if she had a choice in the matter. Not to mention what giving birth would do to a 10-year-old body. I just, I just don't even want to think about it. It's just horrifying. Um, and as uh, Jamie goes on to respond, people like you are absolutely disgusting, which is correct. Wanting a rape victim who probably still plays with dolls and sleeps with stuffed animals, which there's nothing wrong with that. I do that, and I'm 47. Anyway who sleeps with stuffed animals to be forced to carry out a pregnancy that could easily kill her shows a complete lack of empathy and human compassion. This is another case where if I was responding, it would have a hashtag pro-life my ass. That's kind of become one of my signatures because I have to say it far too often living in Western North Carolina as I do. Uh, this one is... My videos aren't being monetized yet, but I would worry about being demonetized for reading this one, but I'm quoting. Why is it offensive to refer to a transgender person as a she-male? Joyce Wright, who I've responded to before, I realize now, apparently someone I agree with, the same reason you probably don't want to be referred to as a fuckwit. <laughs> Which, yeah, it's completely understandable. It's just inherently offensive. Just like anybody called me a cripple would um, be at the very least glared at. I use the word to describe myself, but that's because I'm describing myself. I would never call anyone else a cripple unless I knew that they were okay with it. And I don't know anyone like that, so I use the term only to refer to myself. <laughs> Why do people keep denying the existence of God when there's complete evidence that God exists? And the inevitable response is, and yet no one has ever seen any of this evidence. But this... <laughs> This, again, is what really caught my eye because it's funny. The napkin religion is the one true religion because it says so right here on this napkin. And this one, this was not a sentiment I'd seen before, but I like. Where it says, if you say that God can do anything, then have him say hello. Which, yeah, that would be nice. Why do we say assigned male at birth instead of the more precise the person was born a genetic male? Uh, the simple answer to that is we don't know if the person's genetic male unless we do genetic testing. We have no evidence that I have a Y chromosome. There is external evidence, but I've never had my DNA tested, so I can't say for sure that I have a Y chromosome. And likewise, there's nothing... We can't assume that my wife has double X. There's just... Without actual genetic testing, there's no way to know this, which is why... We don't say born a genetic whatever unless we're doing genetic testing. But that's essentially what the 
Christian Winter replied here, but I wanted to give my take on it. <laughs> Why are liberals aggressively pushing for the sexualization of children? Why can't they just leave that stuff between adults? And uh, Mike Jones replies, uh, let me explain something to you. This, which is uh, a picture of a drag queen reading to children in a library with their parents sitting there, says, let me explain something to you. This isn't sexualization of children. This is, and that picture is a disturbing picture of uh, child beauty pageants. It's just, just creepy, but something conservatives go along with. It's, well, yeah, that's just wrong. I'm going to come to that last. Okay. Why should women get equal rights and benefits when only men get conscripted or forced to fight in wars? I'm betting you this is one of the assholes that voted to keep women from being allowed to sign up for selective service. They want to. But we won't let them because they're fragile little women and we're, our fragile male egos can't handle the fact that women can fight right alongside us. Ugh. Yeah, since men have more obligations by law, isn't it only right for them to get extra privileges? Yeah, they only have those extra rights because they keep exercising those extra privileges to give them extra rights. <sighs> Just garg. Alright, I'm a military brat, so things like this just really get up my ass. Okay. How can atheists so arrogantly deny God when he sacrificed his own son to save us? This is when, you know, a year ago when I was still a Christian, um, I might have agreed with this uh, question asker here. But now that I've finally had the scales removed from my eyes, this response is just priceless. It's going to become the response I always use to such questions in the future. Which is, why do Christians arrogantly deny Odin when he sacrificed his own eye to defeat the Frost Giants? <laughs> oh, that's just great. Why is it okay to require an ID for a gun purchase, but it's not okay to ask for an ID to vote? And Cheryl Williams' answer is quite simple. It says, you have to show an ID when you purchase a gun and when you register to vote. However, you're not required to show your ID every time you shoot your gun, and therefore you shouldn't be required to show your ID every time you vote, which just makes absolute sense. It's just, that kind of settles the debate for me. And this decided not to stay where I had scrolled to. Yeah, yeah, this is another one of the, what the hell? Why don't Western women understand that becoming more masculine, career-oriented, and independent makes them less valuable to men, not more? Wow. Women's value is not tied up into in how useful they are to men. Women's value is tied up into their value as human beings, not your servants. Yeah, nutwig. Wow, there's a, I have no idea what that means, but anyway. <laughs>